Welcome. Today we're going to talk about fundamental counting principle. Usually fundamental counting principle is kind of paired with factorial, but uh, I'm going to put factorial in a different video just because if you want one and you don't want the other, you don't have to sit through both. Anyway, fundamental counting principle is just the idea of what happened or how many possible uh, outcomes there could be if I have a few different choices. Usually fundamental counting principle is uh, most of the time when you see them in math books and stuff they're talking about uh, outfit opportunities and food opportunities like if you get to choose different sides or different uh, main courses and different desserts that kind of thing. So uh, what we're gonna do this time I'll just do clothes because it's pretty common. So say I'm in a situation in which I have three shirts to choose, to choose from. I have uh, two pairs of pants nice ones to go to an event I would imagine I, I'm sure they have more and then maybe um, three pairs of shoes that I could wear to whatever event I'm going to now in this situation I need to know how many total uh, outfits I could make like just mixing and matching uh, I have to have one shirt one pair of pants and one pair of shoes for each outfit and I want to know how many can I make total so what I'm going to do is uh, visually for the video side of it, I'm going to show you what it looks like as sort of a tree diagram and then we're going to show you that it's really, I'm going to talk to you about how easy it is to get the answer. So if you're looking for total opportunities, so I'm going to say I have shirt one, shirt two, and shirt three. Well shirt one I could wear pair of pants one and pair of pants, or pair of pants two. I can't wear both. I mean I guess I could but that would be kind of ridiculous. I'm going to make this an H, this a P, and this an S. That way you know what I'm talking about. Uh, same with shirt two. Like I don't want to wear shirt one, so I could wear either pair of pants with those. And the same with shirt three. I could wear either pair of pants that I want. From here, I have to think of my shoe options. Uh, once I say I pick shirt one and pair of pants one, and then I have three options for sh shoes. So I'm going to do H1, H2, and H3. Same thing for here here, 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 starting to look like N1 at this point, and then finally the last set. So this shows all my possible, looking at the H's, it shows all my possibilities for uh, making outfits. So I could have one two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve, thirteen, fourteen, fifteen, sixteen, seventeen, and eighteen. So I have eighteen total uh, uh, options to pick the mix and match of it all so I can just sort of get the answer, uh, get that many total possibilities. Now why go through all that? You don't make a tree diagram every time. So what they've figured out eventually is that if you just multiply the numbers together, uh, you can get the information that you need. So if I have three shirts, two pairs of pants, and three shoes, and all I'm looking for is how many total uh, options that I'd have by mixing and matching them, all I have to do is 3 times 2, which is 16, times 3, which gives me my 18. So anytime you have multiple choices to make and you, you're supposed to mix and match them and you want to know how many total options that you have, fundamental counting principle says multiply the number of original choices of each set together, you get your answer. 